threat is over, the emotional toll it took on people is not. An 18-year-old woman who was infatuated with the Columbine shooting traveled 1,600 miles from Florida to Colorado. She bought a shotgun. The FBI's search for Sol Paez ended this afternoon when they found she'd taken her own life. Not before hundreds of schools around the Denver metro area closed today because of the threat. I'm seeing on Facebook comments that closing schools was an overreaction, saying you can't close a school every time there's a school threat because it happens all the time. That is a sad truth. There was one today in DeKalb. Considering Colorado, the threat came on the week of the 20th anniversary of Columbine. The lawn of the school was a triage center for the injured when I got there to cover the story in 99. 12 students and a teacher died. That was 20 years ago, but it doesn't feel like it to people who lived there at the time. So back to the question, should schools close over a threat? School districts will tell you the answer depends on whether the threat is credible. The fear, if you don't close and something happens, well, that concern is enough for some parents to pull their kids out whether the school closes or not. Others argue we cannot bow to fear. But there's another layer here. It's not just about a decision to potentially protect people in the hours ahead, but also about being sensitive to what has happened in years past. There are places in our country where a lot of people feel the pit in their stomach when they hear a school is a target because they lived through what happens when threatening words become violent actions and they'll never be the same because of it. Something to consider.